Good morning, everyone. So, uh, everyone, please be welcomed to this workshop. Uh, so, it's a very good pleasure to be here. É um prazer, pessoal, começar aqui esse, essa manhã né, com vocês é, nesse workshop. E aí eu queria é, consultar vocês, não sei se... se é, fica, eu fiquei meio indeciso, né? Se a gente faz esse workshop em português ou em inglês. Então, o que, é que vocês acham aí? O que, é que a gente deve fazer? Vocês acham que vão treinar o listening de vocês, se for em inglês? Uh, so, um, basically, this workshop is going to be about uh, the listening skill when you teach English as a teacher. So, sometimes the listening uh, is a very individual uh, activity. Sometimes it's difficult to share with others uh, how you try, how you uh, improve your listening skills. But we can help. Teachers can help. Teachers are not the ones who... Um, teachers are not the one who are supposed to um, open your mind and then put listening or speaking or any other skill into your mind. So this is very um, an individual task as speaking as any other language or in, in any other language. Uh, so what I want to share today is a little bit what the teacher can do. The teacher can do lots of things and I cannot share this in just uh, 50 minutes. So I wanna share what I do, what I did and uh, what I like to do when I'm teaching. Okay, so I will start sharing my screen here, and I hope it works. I think you can see my slides now. So, uh, basically, when we say teaching listening, uh, it's, it's a very trick word. We say teach, because teach uh, we are supposed to, to give guidelines. We are supposed to uh, 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 give students, uh, how can I say, a menu of how to, to listen. And as I said, this is a very individual task. So, what is listening? Basically, listening is hearing something with attention. We have two verbs. We have listen and we have hear. What's the difference? Actually, hear is when you hear something. For example, I'm, I'm hearing a dog barking nearby. But listen is when you pay attention. For example, if you want to understand what I'm saying, you need to listen. Because you need to pay attention to my words, to my pronunciation, to my vocabulary. So listening is a more deep uh, activity than just hearing a sound. For example, some students, when we are teaching online classes, they, uh, they go to the room, the Google Meet or Zoom room, and then they leave the computer there. And when they leave the computer there, and they, they are going to do uh, other things, uh, like cleaning the house or doing the cooking or anything else, or sleeping, whatever. And they might hear what the teacher and the other students are saying. They might. They might hear, like, um, the presentations, but they are not listening. And if they are not listening, if they are not pay, paying attention, it's difficult to learn what the teacher is telling. 
or what the teacher is saying or what, what the, the, the lecturer is saying. So listening is paying attention, okay? And we can say that listening is part of a bigger group of uh, skills. So skills, when we teach English, this is not to teach the students, but we can, we can talk a little bit with this when we are teaching uh, to give the students some awareness of the importance of listening. For example, some students want to speak, 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 speak all the time. But if they don't understand what the other person or what the, the, the lecturer or what, what the characters in the movie are saying, how can they speak? So this is a group of skills. Skills are abilities things that we can develop, we can improve, we can acquire. I don't have skills like playing the guitar or playing soccer or drawing or coding a program, but I can learn, I can develop, I can prove, and in the end, I can acquire this skill. So when we talk about learning a language, can, it can be English, French, Spanish, Japanese, whatever language we are talking about, we have to develop some skills. And these skills are under one competence, one bigger competence. And this bigger competence is communication. So we have to communicate. We have to pass a message. We have to understand the messages. Ok? So, if you have any questions, se vocês tiverem perguntas, se eu estiver indo muito rápido, se vocês não estiverem entendendo bolhufas do que eu estou dizendo, por favor, coloquem no, no chat, tá bom? Que eu repito, I explain again, or uh, I can rephrase, or go slower. And posso ir um pouco mais devagar. So, please, chat. Uh, so, these skills, when we talk about languages, these skills are, um, they have to be developed. We don't, we don't, um, we are not born, I was not born listening to English or speaking to English, speaking English or writing in English or reading. So, um, we don't, we don't, uh, how can I say, we are not born with this. We can, we have to develop. So, uh, listening is one of the four language skills. We have listening, we have speaking, we have writing, and we have reading. And these skills, they are grouped into two groups, the input skills and the output skills. What are the input skills? When we listen, and when we read, we acquire language. We get language from other people. So when I read, I see the words in English or in other language, so I can learn these words. And speaking and writing, so I, I give out what I have. So it's an output. Do you understand what I mean? So input is important because it's how you get the language. And output is even important because, is, is even more important because you practice the language. Some students, they don't listen and they don't read, but they wanna speak. How is that possible? So you have to balance everything. You have to read a lot. You have to listen a lot. You have to speak a lot, even, if you are alone, okay, in front of a mirror, you can speak in front of a mirror lots of times. I do this all the time when I'm learning a new language. And you have to write, of course. Writing is very important so you can consolidate the, the, the words you learn. So this is the basics about listening. Um, 
And then we have strategies to teach as a teacher. Okay, so these strategies uh, are for teachers, but also for uh, students who want to improve. They can use the strategies as their friend, but teachers must be aware of these strategies so they can help students learning. As I said in the beginning, teachers don't really teach listening. They give opportunities for the students to improve their listening skills. So the strategies are basically top-down and bottom-up. What are the top-down strategies? For example, when you listen to a TV episode or when you listen to a song or when you listen to uh, some dialogue, you have to get the main idea. You have to um, you have to predict what what the people are saying next. So when you do the whole thing, when you have a bigger listening, and then you have to understand. So these are top down. Let's say that it's from the bigger to the smaller. Okay. So it's important that the teacher. Uh, provides students with these kinds of listening so they can uh, predict uh, vocabulary, so they can predict what the people are going to say. Uh, and the teacher can do this using pictures, using other texts, using conversation, using whatever they have uh, uh, available. So, for example, before listening, I like to teach vocabulary. I like to teach or to exercise some words that the students are going to listen. Because if I don't know the word, how can I understand the word? Is that true? So, uh, for example, if there are some specific vocabulary I want the students to understand in the listening, I have to teach them before. Okay, this is everything that I say to my students. If you know more vocabulary, you will understand more. This is true. Okay, um, and then we teachers must have strategies for keeping attention, students' attention. For example, during a listening activity, teachers must have uh, activities that call students' attention, like drawing, like writing something like relating something okay so be aware of uh boring exercises if you don't know if your exercises your activities are boring ask your students they will tell you teacher this is not very good this is not um a very interesting activity uh actually they don't we, we don't have to teach students how to to say teacher, yes, or Mr. or Mrs., like um, in other places. In Brazil, we say teacher and, and whatever. Uh, so let's, let's go on. Let's keep on. Uh, and it's important that students listen multiple times. Okay? So sometimes we give students just one listening opportunity. And it's important that in class, in class, we give students opportunities to listen more times. Uh, bottom up, small listenings, like dictations, like micro listening, small chunks, or just sentences. Uh, and it's good to, uh, to have students reading the transcriptions. So most books, uh, most English books, they, they bring the audios or videos, and we have the transcriptions. The teachers have the transcriptions. So most of times, I give the students the transcriptions. If I have the transcriptions, I can give them. Because it's, it's interesting that after they understand, there are things that we don't understand. This is true for every listener. We don't understand everything. No one understands everything. 
like when we watch a movie or we listen to a song, we there are some things that we don't understand. So we have to check. I have to check when when I don't understand. So give students oppor the opportunity to read the transcriptions. Uh, also, narrow listening, uh, na narrow listening activities are like uh, you choose like five or two or three, whatever uh, whatever number you 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 want about the same topic. For example, if the students, if your students, um, they are fond of soccer. Give them four listenings about soccer, and they will get the vocabulary, and they 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 will get used to the vocabulary. I don't know, I don't know about you, but when I when I am um, watching a TV series, I have uh, by the end of the the movie or the TV series, I understand the words that I didn't understand in the beginning. Uh, and I will understand in other places. So, for example, I get, I, I acquire this vocabulary and I will listen to it every time that I, I have the opportunity. So, uh, give them the same topics mo uh, more times. And then we move to extensive listening. Extensive listening means that you students and you teachers don't have to be shut don't have to be um how can i say encapsulated for uh in a classroom you need to listen all the time everything that you have access to listen to plenty of text and varied formats and genres but i don't like this genre listen to it because it's important for you to get um, acquainted to this kind of, to get uh, a costume, to get used to this, to these kinds of terms. Uh, also, one thing that I do is to keep logs. For example, if I'm listening or reading or watching a movie, I always have something to take notes about what I'm listening or about vocabulary that I saw, that I listened, and then I just can visit later and uh, look for the vocabulary, look for the, the expressions. Uh, and it's very good to listen and read at the same time. That's why watching a movie with the subtitles is very important. Okay? So it's no sin if you watch a movie with subtitles. Please do it. You are training your ears to recognize uh, the words that you are not accustomed to it, to them. Uh, live listening. What is live listening? Do, do you know, do, have, you, have you ever realized about when you listen, you can listen, for example, uh, what I'm saying now, it's live. Uh, and most teachers provide students only with um, re recorded listenings to the tapes, to the transcriptions from the book or whatever. So it's important to talk if it's important to give students the opportunity to live uh, sorry, to, to listen uh, live things. Examples, storytelling. Tell stories. Ask your students to tell stories because they are going to get used not only to your accent, but to, the, to your students, to, your, uh, uh, to their classmates' accents and the ways they speak. Reading aloud. It's also a live listening strategy. Uh, interviews, conversations, teacher explanations, lectures. So these are things that we cannot control most of times. For example, if we are listening to a lecture, as you are listening to my lecture now, uh, you cannot control what I'm saying. I cannot like stop and go back and listen again. So it's live. It's here, it's now. So it's important that you get these kinds of listening. 
And we have pre-recorded materials. Most teachers use, use these kinds of materials. And there are, of course, advantages and disadvantages. Some advantages of using pre-recorded materials, because we have them in our hands, it's available. So we can download from the internet, it comes with the books, um, we can see online. So these are very good materials because we have lots of them, plenty of them. When I started to, to, to learn English, I, I listened to the, uh, audio tapes, yes, to, to cassette tapes. But today we have podcasts, we have YouTube, we have the world available. So it's there. We just have to know how to use it. And uh, we can look for different accents and voices. You can download an audio with a British accent or a uh, South African accent or an Australian accent or uh, a Brazilian accent. It's good. Okay. So all accents matter. Um, it's, it's interesting that uh nowadays english is not only um uh, american and british so forget these okay uh english is a worldwide language it's a lingua franca so if you have uh, a japanese guy talking in talking in english a mexican uh a finnish a russian this is important because you get accustomed to these kinds of accents. So it doesn't matter if it's um, American or British. You have all of them talking, okay? So all the world. Um, and of course you have the transcriptions, you have uh, specially produced materials. So these are the advantages. What are the disadvantages? Sometimes in the classroom, if we are in a real classroom, um, the teacher plays the, the audio. The, normally, teachers have this uh, stereo, yes, famoso radinho do professor de inglês. So the teacher plays the, 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 the audio and it's very far and the student can't listen to it very well. Um, you know, so the other students are making noise. So, the acoustic is a little bit uh, uh, an advantage, disadvantage. But using the tools I'm going to present today, uh, this is not an ad disadvantage anymore because every student can listen to their time. So with their uh, earbuds or earphones or whatever they want to listen on. So, and normally all together, everyone listening to the same thing um, at the same time. So using the internet, that's why we have the asterisks because uh, nowadays we, using online classes, students can listen to their time on that time. So um, we don't have to be worried to, to be playing the, the video or the, the audio for everyone at the same time. Of course, if it's pre-recorded, there is no interaction. And it's not, uh, sometimes, most of times are not natural. Of course, if it's recorded uh, from a lecture or from something that was bigger, uh, it can be natural, but most of times are not natural. And um, as, as I said, you can interact with me, okay? So this is live. So please interact with me, ask questions, say, say something. Now we arrive at the big topic of this workshop, okay? So we have talked about um, how listen work. We, we have talked about uh, what listen is, uh, how teachers can help students improve their listening skills. Uh, we have some considerations. These are considerations about um, listening activities or listening things. But the topic, the main topic here, and I spent 23 minutes 
talking only about the whole thing, the listening. And now I want to move into a very nice specific um, thing, which is using as a teacher, okay? As a teacher, using movies, shows, and videos from wherever you have access to, uh, to give students the opportunity to listen. Most students already listen to a lot of English. They listen to music, they listen to the movies, they listen to the TV series, they listen uh, uh, to podcasts. So I, I, I wonder if this is really um, uh, new. You know, because to, to, uh, uh, students nowadays, they already do this. They listen to movies, shows, and videos. So I might be saying this. I might be talking to uh, students that don't, students that um, have not, how can I say, organized their studying, studying lives. Okay, so you as a teacher have this um, commitment to help students find good materials if they uh, haven't haven't had found yet. Um, so basically, where can I find these movies, shows, and videos? We have three platforms like YouTube, Vimeo, Dailymotion. So these are the three main. You can have access to as many as you want because the internet is full of them. Um, but you have these three main uh, mainstream uh, um, video platforms. And then you have Netflix as a representation of the all the other platforms like Amazon Prime, or uh, HBO Pro, I think, Disney, and whatever uh, streaming platform you have access to. So, but Netflix is the, the most important, not the most important, but it's the most known, and I think it's the oldest. Uh, but teachers can also provide students with uh, videos from uh, books that, we normally use in our courses, like for example, English file. Um, they have lots of videos, interesting videos, uh, pre-recorded videos, of course. Uh, um, and I, I normally use some in, in my classrooms. Uh, and then we have free videos on uh, websites like BBC uh, for, uh, for French students, TV Sank. For uh, Spanish students, we have the TVE, La TV. So these channels, these uh, TV channels and internet uh, networks, they have lots of videos available. So please help students find them. You, you are not supposed to give them all the time the videos, but help them find these videos, good videos, okay? When should a teacher use or give students a video or a listening activity with video? Before a class, for example, if you want the students to get to know what the topic is going to be, give them the, 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 the video before. We normally have WhatsApp groups today, so nowadays, so we, can send the videos to them so they watch before beforehand. During the class, um, normally in these remote uh, activities, I do not do during the class because students don't have the same connection type, so they might not listen to it very well. So I normally do it before or after the lesson. And lesson independent listening. Don't expect students to listen only in the lessons or only things related to a lesson. Give them the opportunity to listen everything. Oh, I saw this video. It's very interesting. I'm going to send to my students. They will, uh, they will like it. So if the students 
don't listen if they see what you have sent but they don't listen it's because you didn't you hadn't uh uh shown to them the importance of listening so please before show the importance of listening as an input activity and then whatever you send to them whatever you tell them to listen they will do what can we offer students uh short videos i i i'd rather use short videos because uh we can understand the whole thing better and faster so extracts for, from TV series, extracts from movies, extracts from docu documentaries, okay? Video clips, they are very good. Video clips, not only because of the song, but because of what they are doing during the video clips. They are video clips uh, that show wonderful things. Uh, TED Talks, I am, um, how can I say this? Uh, I am addicted to TED Talks, mainly the TED ad talks they are very short like five to six minutes and they talk about very 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 nice topics and many topics so ted talks and they are free on youtube um why to give students these videos or um shows or extractions extracts to focus on grammar vocabulary or pronunciation this is the basic you know uh remember the the lecture yesterday professor pies uh he told that grammar is not the main point of of the teaching it's not it's important that the students have uh have an idea how the language works, but you you don't have to to teach all the time grammar, but they they can come uh, in a lesson once in a while. So you can use these videos to focus on some aspects of grammar, vocabulary, and mainly pronunciation. This is great for pronunciation. Also, and I think the most important part of using TV series uh, or movies uh is to focus on functions acts fluency reproduction yes reproduction not reproduction in the meaning in the sexual meaning but uh reproduction of what they are saying of the way they are saying you know if i don't know you guys but when i listen to something when i watch movie or a tv series and when i turn off the com the computer or the television or the, the mobile i get i get around the house speaking as the characters oh you you shouldn't have done that you you did this why did you do that you know i get uh i reproduce what i listened so and this is very very good for our fluency so i think the most important part of using these uh very very contextualized materials is because we can um mimic we can uh, try to, to do as they do, and we get uh, used to it. Some techniques, uh, watching soundless videos, okay? So uh, provide students to, to watch a movie or a TV series or whatever you want them to, to watch uh, without the sound. So they guess what they are saying. Okay, so uh, play the, the, the part of the movie and they are, oh, I think they are saying, I love you because they are, oh, kissing. So this is guessing and this is very important. Watching parts of a whole video or freezing scenes. This is basics, yes? We watch something and we stop and then we, uh, we can ask questions about what have happened or we can uh, ask questions like, what's going to happen next or what do you think they are going to do or things like this so we can uh chop up the movie in in several parts uh partial viewing okay so you can you can take a, a sheet of paper and you can put on the screen uh so students don't see what they are um part of what happening what's happening and they can um have more curiosity about things 
partial viewing, uh, fast forwarding. We can play the video very fast. So they have an idea of what's going on in the whole picture. Listening only to the audio, a pictureless, pictureless video. So they, 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 they might guess how the characters are acting, uh, what they are wearing or what they are doing, where they are. It's very important to know this, uh, these features of the, the, the video. Watching audio described videos. Okay, so I just I have just discovered this. I'm 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 very I'm uh, I'm very humble to say that I have just discovered about audio described videos. What what's audio described videos? Um, I don't know if you know, but I do a master degree in translation. So, and and I'm doing uh, uh, um, some courses about uh, audiovisual translation, and then. Some videos, and I didn't know this, some videos are audio described. Oh, that's that's it. When when you watch a movie, there are not only what the characters are, are saying, but someone is telling what's happening. Oh, Hugh is moving his hands while he speaks, and there is something behind. So this is audio description. And these are specially made for uh, blind people because they are not seeing what, what's happening. But we can use this to increase our uh, description accuracy. And of course, we can have move sessions, move clubs. Why not? Uh, and, and movie sessions, when we watch a whole movie, uh, of course, is for having fun because we always have fun when we watch a movie, but we can discuss several aspects. We can discuss the, the subjects, we can discuss about uh, if, uh, whether the movie was good or not, or the characters, or how, how it was made, and language, and whatever the club or the group uh, wants to discuss. And now, as I, as I moved to movies, I'm going to show you, and I have, um, very, very few minutes now. I'm going to show you as a teacher, and I know most of, of you uh, who are watching are teachers, so I'm going to show you uh, some activities that I did, and I remember, okay, because I did a lot of activities, but these are the most recent and the most, um, the ones that I have the materials you know, because most of my, my stuff are lost. So these are the ones I remember. So I once did an activity with an episode of Modern Family. It's a TV series and it, it was uh, the episode about Halloween uh, during the season number two. Uh, and then what I did, I pre-taught vocabulary. Uh, we talked about the main actions and we matched the characters with the speech. I, I mean, what, what someone said, that was the sentence uh, that uh, someone said. But I don't know the name of the character. My students don't know the name of the characters, but they are dressing like famous characters. For example, we have here, um, I think it's the 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 um, oh my god uh that very famous um, horror family adams family i think so you can say no someone that is wearing a hat and we can if there is only one person wearing a hat it's going to be uh phil uh, his name is phil um and and then we had a worksheet okay so that was this was the whole the whole episode. We watched the whole episode during the class and we did the activities because it was Halloween. Uh, then I did uh, an activity using a short video from uh, a book called Teen to Teen. These are pre-made video, okay? So they, they were made for teachers. This was not made for teachers. I had to arrange and create the activities, but this was kind of made up. So I used this because it, it's very simple and I used for dictation, vocabulary, pronunciation, 
it's missing an N here. Uh, and sometimes the characters ask questions and they stop. So the, the, the listener can, can respond can, uh, to what they, they said. So responses to what they said. And it's very interesting for basic students. Uh, actually, this was for teenagers, not for adults. Uh, and I remember that I did this activity once with uh, a video from YouTube. It's, it's um, a mixed up of several movies, you know, uh, extracts from several movies that have the, the phrase of verbs and they have the, ver the verb get. And uh, I had studied the, the verb get before with the students. And then I, I presented this video so they can get the idea of the vocabulary being used in some movies. So these made up movies, they, these get together movies or uh, videos are all available on YouTube. You can, you can have access to it all the time. And also, I remember I did uh, an audio description uh, activity. So I used this uh, animated short film. So most of the, the short film, people don't talk. So it's just actions. And, and, and the, the guy is doing something. And I asked the students to audio describe. So they, they told uh what he was doing what what was uh happening and most of it they talked about the feelings so for example oh he was sad and he was showing a kind of uh despair and in the end he was uh happy or sad you know i'm not gonna tell you at the end of the story but um the importance here it was to have students audio describing that's way not telling what they are saying, but telling what things are uh, happening during the, the short video. Okay, and also uh, there was the live listening when students told the other students what they had uh, or to describe, so we could compare. Uh, using Netflix during the class is very difficult because. Uh, some streaming platforms like Google Meet, they don't allow us to project the the video. So I recorded with the mobile, the, the TV scene, um, uh, and then I used in the classroom, okay? So basically I recorded from Netflix. I hope nobody um, will see this from Netflix. And, and then I used uh, a very short um, passage from the, the TV series Salvation. And we had the subs, the subtitles, to identify phrasal verbs and to identify feelings and to predict what was going to happen next. Because uh, this character, I'm not going to spoil, but this character goes to this place thinking of one thing idea, having one idea, well, what the place it was, but in the end of the series, not in the end, but uh, during the, 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 the TV show, she's going to find out that it was not what she expected to. So we tried to predict from what we had seen. And this was not prepared. Like I had, I was looking for some part of the TV. Series. No, it's just showed up and I'm going to use this with my students. So I recorded and then I brought to the class. Uh, and now we move from some activities to some platforms. Uh, if, I, if I can't use the, the videos during my class, because normally they uh, are not going to listen very well because of connections or because they are not in the class, I can provide them ways to listen to what I have prepared after or before the class or whenever they want. Uh, so I'm gonna show you some platforms that teachers can use to make up uh, activities using videos from YouTube, from Netflix, from videos that you have recorded from whenever, wherever you, you want to be. So this is Wiser Me. I don't know if many of you know this, this platform. So Wiser Me, you can put a video and you, uh, you can um, upload a video and you can 
um, provide several kinds of activities. You can have students uh, answering uh, by typing or speaking or matching or drawing or sorting or making a table or matching or, you know, drawing or uh, completing uh, filling the filling the gaps, so you you can do lots of things with this platform um, to provide them with listening. Also, and one of the most famous here is Nearpod, because you can uh, play. And Nearpod, what, what's the good point of Nearpod? Is that you can do it during the class. It's it can be synchronous, and when we play, when the teacher has a video or an audio the students can play in their devices so i don't have to play for everyone they can play and listen again and stop and go back and listen again i didn't try i, di I didn't understand so i go back so students can do it by their own during the class synchronous uh and you can add lots of activities using this video or um thing Add puzzle. Add puzzle. Uh, we can get a video from YouTube and from uh, other platforms, or you can record your own videos, and then you can add some activities during the video. For example, uh, there is a part of the video, and then the video stops, and the student has to answer a question about what has happened, uh, and. If, if he or she doesn't, um, if they don't um, answer, the video doesn't go go on. Uh, you have, you can, the teacher can do the video, the activities, or they can find uh, pre-made activities. Okay, so Edpuzzle is a very good platform to use videos to try out the listening activities. Uh, and also, uh there is the is collective it's very good for teachers because we can find um activities with listening that they were made by other teachers so if i want to if i want students to practice uh some vocabulary like the parts of the house um i can find a video of a movie or a video clip that talks about the parts of the house and they have questions and they have activities. As you can see here, uh, I, I took a, a video from How I Met Your Mother from YouTube and then I'm going to insert some uh, activities. It can be uh, to, to put sentences in the order or I can complete or I can click on, uh, on the video to, to to uh, to tag, for example, the video is showing a house and then it stops and you have to put the names of the parts of the house, you know, so it's very interesting. So IS Collective, um, it's open and free. And now, as I have only, I'm sorry, and I have only, as I have only some minutes, I prepared for you, and this is the, this is the end, uh, a Padlet with uh, my activities, the, the listening activities that I had made before. So I organized the ones I remembered in a Padlet. So you can see how I worked with uh, these listening activities with TV series, with uh, a movie trailer, with a song, with a TED talk, with uh, a pre-made video, whatever. So I have them organized here. OK, uh, if you didn't understand what I said or you want to improve what I said, I, here at, at this Padlet, you can find these slides and you can find books where you can learn more how to teach with listening. Uh, please go to this. Um, Can someone please put this link to the comments? So, so people, I, I cannot, I cannot type, but you can have access using your QR code because you are going to have access to my Padlet. Um, if if you 
cannot have access to this Padlet, uh, you can send me a message through Instagram. Okay, so I can send you. But Livia, if you are here, can you can you put this link that I'm typing here on our private chat to everyone? So this is the 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 link. Okay, thank you very much. So guys, this is the link for this Padlet. You can see some examples of listening activities using videos, TV series, and movies that I had made myself. Uh, there are There is an episode of uh, Mind Your Language. I don't know if you know this, app, this TV series. Uh, students in London, they are learning English and they make some kind of funny mistakes. And then I asked the students to identify the mistakes and well, you can check, you can check it out. Um, so these are the references of my lecture. Okay, so I basically based my talk on uh, Jeremy Harmer and JJ Wilson. So these are very good books and they are on Padlet. You, you can have access to them. Um, Thank you very much. And please follow uh, copeling.unilab at Instagram and also follow me, RR Idiomas VIP. Okay. So, and um, I, I normally offer English courses or Spanish or, or French courses. And uh, in the very near future, I'm opening new, new classes, new, new, um, how can I say, new, um, groups uh i have a question here let me stop sharing professor do you think today's textbook helps students achieve all the skills and abilities that lingua franca requires or will it depend on the competence of the teacher in the classroom uh Caio, i that's a very good question and thank you very much N no book can do uh what a teacher can do in the classroom you know you you can have the best book and i have seen this teachers using the best books the textbooks uh and they kind of they mess up with the things you know they mess up with the with the activities they only follow the activities they they offer only uh, the the most boring activities so normally teachers have to adapt no, normally books are going better and better and better, but we have to put a little bit of the teacher uh, in the classroom, in the lesson, you know, you can prepare your own materials. Uh, I use books as, um, how can I say, as a guide. So I know what I can teach uh, using the texts, using the audios, using the videos, using some exercises, but not using the book, like following the book, you know. Uh, and now we are going to do the activity. Okay, you're, you're finished. Okay, now let's go to this activity and this and this. No, this is not good. So uh, uh, I tend to move to several activities, you know, and of course I'm a learner. I'm also a learner and I'm still learning how to teach uh, as everyone uh, in this in this room, in this lecture, I think. So we always improve. We always can improve. I'm, go I'm going to show you uh, again um, my Padlet screen. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Uh, so this is the Padlet. You can have, you can find uh, several, um, you can set, you can, you can find several activities, you know, uh, and the books that I talked about. Uh, there is an activity with, about Halloween. There is an activity about my Your language. It's a TV series also. Uh, so the TED talk, a movie, uh, a movie trailer. Uh, I am legend. I don't know if you know this move. Uh, there is also a French activity I did with my students on Yearpod. Um, also, there are the two books that I talked about. There, there is um, one part of the slides I'm using, and 
uh, a link for several uh, listening activities made up uh, from other teachers. So, no, okay. So these, this is what I have to share for you. If you have any questions, please do it. Uh, I'm here uh, to listen to you. So, uh, Tayana, Tay, Tayana, eu poderia usar as plataformas de música como Spotify, Deezer, por exemplo, como no Adler. Of course you can, of course you can. Uh, you can also create. Uh, there is one, I think two, two of my students from Curta Língua, it's a project that I developed uh, together alongside with other students. Uh, I think Lara and Rodrigo are here. We, uh, we have a book club with students from the United States. Um, and then we have a desert, no, a Spotify playlist. So everyone can share their songs and we can listen to their songs all the time. You know, so, so you can use during the class or you can use before the class or you can use after the class. So tell students, tell students that listening is important and they will listen everything they have. You know, you are not supposed to give them everything. You, you can give the way. You can say, no, here you can find good materials, but uh, they have to be aware of the importance of listening. And listening is really important, okay? Because you acquire vocabulary, you acquire pronunciation, you acquire uh, language, real language, and then you can use when you speak. So thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Don't mention it, Katia. And uh, thank you very good. Thank you, Laís, Caio, and everyone that is here. Um, um, it was a very good pleasure to be here. Okay, so thank you. And in the afternoon, we have a round table um, with my, my, my friend, uh, Yuri, and one of, my, one of our teachers from the Kansas University. Okay, it's going to be a very interesting topic, uh, how to teach um, uh, using students' culture, you know, and also we are going to show you what we did uh, back there in the United States. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you very much and see you in the afternoon at 2.30.